Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Good morning. Welcome to our Easter Sunday, April 12th worship, 2020. So glad that you are with us. Let me get my wave in. And also, please join me in being safe. And wow. Thank you. Want to uh, begin with some announcements. First of all, thank you to Cynthia, Steve, Dave, and Angie for our music today. Also want to... Uh, say thank you to all of you watching for all of your affirmations understanding and patience during our worship teams learning experiences with streaming it is a steep curve for all and for sure and it's in this context that i want to um, share with us Part of the Disneyland story that I have been reading about, the words I share about are regarding Disneyland's opening day. For those of you old enough to remember, it was broadcast on TV. And uh, this is what is said about opening day at Disneyland. I quote, the show went well, with only a few miscues. Art Linkletter got flustered and introduced Captain Hook and his pirate crew as Captain Crew. Walt Disney accidentally appeared on camera ahead of schedule talking to one of the TV technicians. During an introduction of Disney characters, the announcer proclaimed, and now, Cinderella! As the camera cut to Fess Parker in his Davy Crockett buckskin and coon hat cap, riding horseback down Main Street. USA. First time experiences are always interesting and good learning. Pray and hope all is well with your families and friends. We are going to get through this together with the resurrected Christ at the center of our faith and living. Again, welcome. Let's worship. Like we've been doing, we want to begin with a weekly devotional reading from 1 Thessalonians and then have a few moments of reflective silence. 1 Thessalonians 5.17 says, Pray without ceasing. We reflect in silence. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. We continue with our confession and forgiveness. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God who is present, who gives life, who calls into existence the things that do not exist. Amen. If you were to keep watch 
over sins, O Lord, who could stand? Yet with you is forgiveness. And so we confess silently in our hearts. Gracious God, have mercy on us. We confess that we have turned away from you knowingly and unknowingly. We have wandered from your resurrection life. We have strayed from your love for all people. Turn us back to you, O God. Give us new hearts and right spirits that we may find what is pleasing to you and dwell in your house forever. Amen. Receive the promised good news. God turns to you in love. I will put my spirit in you, and you shall live, says our God. All your sin is forgiven in the name of Jesus Christ, who is the free and abounding gift of God's grace for you. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. O oh God, you gave your only Son to suffer death on the cross for our redemption. And by his glorious resurrection, you delivered us from the power of death. Make us die every day to sin, Lord, that we may live with him forever in the joy of the resurrection. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Good morning, children. I forgot my piece of chocolate that I was going to eat with you and invite you to eat some chocolate with me while we listen to the resurrection story according to the gospel. So because I forgot my chocolate candy, oh, one of my worship assistants has just helped immensely. So children, please join me in a piece of chocolate. Mmm. Delicious. It's got the crackle crunch in it. Are you eating your chocolate, children? And that can apply to adults also. Here we go. The Empty Tomb. It was early in the morning on the third day after Jesus died. The sky was pink and red with the first light of the sun. The women didn't notice the sky. They hurried to the cave that contained Jesus' body. Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of James, led the way. Two others, Salome, and Joanna carried the spices to rub on the body of Jesus. They had a job to do. When the tomb of Jesus came into sight, they froze. Oh no. They had forgotten about the huge stone that sealed the opening to the cave. How would they move it? The women kept going to the cave anyway. As they came closer, the women could see that the stone had already been rolled away. They peeped inside. Oh, it was dark in there. Brrr, it was cold in there. 
drip, drop. It was damp in there. What? It was empty in there. Jesus was gone. An angel appeared in sparkling white clothes. The glow from the angel brightened even the darkest corners of the cave. The women shielded their eyes from the blinding light. Don't be afraid, the angel said. Jesus isn't here. This is a place for the dead. Jesus is alive. Hurry, the angel said. Go tell the disciples. The women did not delay. They ran to tell Jesus' friends what they had seen and heard. Oof. Mary bumped into a man, tripped and fell at his feet. Wait! She knew these feet. A familiar hand reached out to help her. Wait! She knew that hand. She looked up. Yes! She knew that smile. It was Jesus. Hello, friends, Jesus said. Jesus was really alive. The women hugged his feet and shouted with joy. Go tell the others the good news that I am alive, Jesus said. I will meet them in Galilee. I can't wait to see them again. The women had a new job to do. They had to tell everyone that Jesus was alive. Children, I want you to have a conversation with your families. And in that conversation, I want you to tell them one thing that makes you sad right now. And then, when you're finished telling them that, I want you to share with your families one thing that brings you joy right now. Thanks, children. Have a great week. I still have chocolate. Let's finish it. For those who keep track, I am uh, deviating from the appointed readings for Easter Sunday, and really, actually, I'm adding to what we normally hear. I want to read for you 1 Corinthians 15, verses 12 through 22, that says the following. Now, if Christ is proclaimed as raised from the dead, how can some of you say there is no resurrection of the dead? If there is no resurrection of the dead, then Christ has not been raised. And if Christ has not been raised, then our proclamation has been in vain, and your faith has been in vain. We are even found to be misrepresenting God because we testified of God that he raised Christ, whom he did not raise if it is true that the dead are not raised. For if the dead are not raised, then Christ has not been raised. If Christ has not been raised, your faith is futile and you are still in your sins. Then those also who have died in Christ have perished. If for this life only we have hoped in Christ, we are of all people most to be pitied. Good news. But in fact, 
Christ has been raised from the dead, the first fruits of those who have died. For since death came through a human being, the resurrection of the dead has also come through a human being. For as all die in Adam, so all will be made alive in Christ. Here ends our scripture reading. Today's sermon title is Easter Faith. Easter Faith. I hope you're in a little bit of a lighthearted mood because my question I'm going to ask isn't going to make any sense. But when you hear the question, just know, I see you. Raise your hand if you have ever read anything written by John Updike. Thank you, Lusks. Thank you, Baumgartners. Thank you, Burkholders. Thank you, Charlene. Did you know John Updike was raised a Lutheran? It's true. It was an upbringing that he seemed to struggle with as well as be marked by. He's known to say this, I quote, If you are going to believe, then believe! Stop trying to soften the edges of Christian faith or make it more acceptable. End of quote. Updike writes a very earthy poem for Easter Sunday. The title is Seven Stanzas at Easter, a poem for Sunday. Hear the poem. Make no mistake. If he rose at all, it was as his body. If the cell's dissolution did not reverse, the molecules re-knit, the, the amino acids rekindle, the church will fall. It was not as the flowers, each soft spring recurrent, it was not as his spirit in the mouths and fuddled eyes of the eleven apostles. It was as his flesh, ours. The same hymn's thumbs and toes, the same valved heart that pierced, died, withered, paused, and then regathered out of enduring might new strength to enclose. Let us not mock God with metaphor, analogy, sidestepping, transcendence, making of the event a parable, a sign painted in the faded cruel credulity of earlier ages. Let us walk through the door. The stone is rolled back, not paper mache, not a stone in a story, but the vast rock of materiality that in the slow grinding, grinding of time will eclipse for each of us the wide light of day. And if we will have an angel at the tomb, make it a real angel. Weighty with Max Planck's quanta, vivid with hair, opaque in the dawn light, robed in real linen, spun on a definite loom. 
let us not seek to make it less monstrous. For our own convenience, our own sense of beauty, lest, awaken in one unthinkable hour, we are embarrassed by the miracle and crushed by remonstrance. The end of seven stanzas of Easter, a poem for Sunday. We can appreciate Updike's critical thinking and expressions in this poem. And I want to encourage that. It reflects a lot of scripture, especially the Apostle Paul's words about resurrection in 1 Corinthians 15. More particularly, again, what we heard earlier when Paul says, if the resurrection did not happen, our faith is in vain. And yet we believe our faith is not in vain because the resurrection did happen. Of course, we believe or are trying to believe in Jesus' resurrection and the associated big three promises that go with that resurrection. Those promises are the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Yea, for Jesus raising from the dead. To promise us those three big promises and many others, including that he is always with us. Believe that. Try to believe that. The resurrection of Jesus and all that his resurrection means for our faith and our living. Enjoy every day, especially amid a pandemic, believing or trying to believe in Jesus' resurrection and all that it means for our faith and living, especially sharing such good news with a yearning world for good news. We do believe in Jesus' resurrection. Or in fairness, maybe some are trying. I encourage and pray that you would believe in Jesus' resurrection as told about in Scripture. Embrace it. Enjoy it. Collect all the benefits of what that resurrection means for our faith and our living and pertaining to living please do be encouraged that God is with you in sharing that good news Amen We sing now All the Vault of Heaven Resound
Creed, um, do not forget to take your selfies of you dressed in your Easter best outfits today in your homes. Please do that and then um, send those to Anna who will make a collage of all of our pictures in some form or another. We profess our faith in the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Uplifted by the promised hope of healing and resurrection, we join the people of God in all times and places in praying for the church, the world, and all who are in need. Gracious God, our peace and our strength, we pray for our nation and the world 
as we continue to face new uncertainties around coronavirus. Protect the most vulnerable among us, especially all who are currently sick or in isolation. Lord, in your mercy. God of all that is good and favorable, we praise you for the Easter message of Jesus and the joy he brings us because he is in relationship to and with us. Lord, in your mercy. We thank you that Jesus appeared to people that first Easter morning and every Easter Sunday since, including today, to bring and give us in the world love, care, and hope in all of life's circumstances. Lord, in your mercy. Regarding the pandemic, we pray that you would grant wisdom, patience, and clarity to healthcare workers, especially as their work caring for others puts them at great risk. Give them everything they need, Lord. Lord, in your mercy. Merciful Lord, we shout our Easter Alleluia's to you for church, government, military, health care, first responder workers, and their families. Lord, in your mercy. We pray the same Easter hallelujahs for your care of Debbie, Anita, Lisa, Peter, Mary, Paul, Kate, Nick, Luella, Alvin, Angie, Betty, Pat. Nicholas, Jean, Gail, Norbert, and Lonnie. Lord, in your mercy. Amid virus 19, guide us as we consider how best to prepare and respond continually in our families, churches, workplaces, and communities. Lord, in your mercy. Prince of Peace, we pray our hosannas for your merciful care of the world's struggling people. Give them your everlasting and exhaustless love and blessing. Lord, in your mercy. We thank you for all the baptized around the world today. Help us to remember and grow in our baptismal life now and forever. Lord, in your mercy. Finally, regarding the pandemic, we pray that you would give us courage to face these days not with fear, but with compassion, concern, kindness, acts of service, trusting always that you abide with us. Lord, in your mercy, with bold confidence in your love, Almighty God, we place all for whom we pray in your eternal care. Through Christ our Lord we pray. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you. Peace. We continue with our communion. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, for the glorious resurrection of our Savior, Jesus Christ, the true Easter Lamb, 
who gave himself to take away our sin, who in dying has destroyed death, and in rising has brought us to eternal life. And so, with Mary Magdalene and Peter and all the witnesses of the resurrection, with earth and sea and all their creatures, and with angels and archangels, cherubim and seraphim, we praise your name. And the night when Jesus was betrayed, he took bread, gave thanks, broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Again, after supper, Jesus took the cup, gave thanks, gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood shed for you, and for all people, for the forgiveness of sin, do this in remembrance of me. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Behold the risen Christ. Enjoy your communion. Now may the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen and preserve you in his amazing and abundant grace today and always. Remember his words. Peace be with you. Amen. Let us pray. Life-giving God, you have fed us with your word, and our hearts burn within us. Through this meal you have opened to us your presence, your resurrected presence. Now send us forth to share the gifts of Easter with all in need. Through Jesus Christ our Lord we pray. Amen. May the one who brought forth Jesus from the dead raise you to new life, fill you with hope, and turn your mourning into dancing. Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless us now and forever. Amen. Christ is risen. Go in peace and share that good news. Alleluia. Thanks for joining us. Have a great week. Blessings and peace to all.